All right, the dogs and I are here at the Lime Kiln Trail, which is a county park, and we are going to go visit the Lime Kiln, um, an old railroad bridge, which is no longer there, but you can see where it was. They're eager to get started. All right, so there's a new sign here, which is awesome. And I'm gonna do the entire loop at the end so you can see the River Shore Loop Trail and the uh, where the railroad bridge used to be. The trail starts out in this really mossy, second growth forest. So some of this trail does go through private property, so just make sure you respect the private property as you go through those portions. After coming out of that mossy forest, you end up where it's clear. There's more deciduous trees, little aspens and things cottonwoods and a lot of blackberries along the trail. Right now they're actually some ripe ones. Looks like all of the berry bushes are taking over here. We've got uh, thimbleberries and um, blackberries. These ones aren't ripe yet. And I saw some salmonberry leaves too, actually right here, some salmonberries. The thimble and salmonberries are done, but there's still blackberries. And definitely, this used to be a pretty wide area, but it is definitely now just a single track gravel through all of these encroaching bushes. Right. And we're going down to kind of a single track spot. This little stream bed used to have a stream in it. Um, the last few times I've come, it's dried up. I don't know if it is just seasonal now or if it um, has been rerouted into a different channel. I'm at 1.2 miles in and this big clearing is a pond, but it's super, super brushy. I've never actually found a way to get down to it. All right, we're about to go over a bridge. Bridge over Hubbard Creek, but I don't hear it. I've never seen this completely dry. But it's completely dry. Going off the other side of the bridge to see if there was any pools over here. And the answer is no. We really haven't had, we had a super wet spring, but we haven't had hardly any precipitation since. Everything's pretty dry. We we're having a cloudy couple of days, but um, still no rain. So that bridge and the trail section right after that is again part of like basically an old gravel road. I'm not sure if this was something from before or if it was more of a recent um, logging endeavor. Here at 1.36 we are turning off of that gravel type road onto an actual trail. Hikers only at this point um, prior to this horses are allowed. Man, I'm loving these signs. It said it was an Eagle Scout project and good for that Eagle Scout because these, I love the old mossy signs, but you really couldn't read them anymore. These are gorgeous. I can hear a creek to my left now. I'm not sure if that's a different part of Hubbard Creek or a completely different creek. It's way down there in the ravine. Point six two. I don't think you can see it on the video, but it's the first glimpse of the Stilaguamish. This sign is a good reminder, not only that now as we go along the Stilaguamish that we're on a railway grade from the old railroad, but also remove no artifacts. Um, there was a town here, um, um, limestone mine, the lime kiln, which we're going to see, and um, all sorts of things going on out here. People left saws and um, wood stoves and
basins and things, and it's really fun to see these neat artifacts, but I have noticed over the years, um, not only do they deteriorate, but they also go missing. I used to look at a blue and white bowl somebody had set up on a stump, and then one day it was just gone. Here's a spot where you can see erosion at work. We're gonna go down to the right, but I just wanted to walk out and show where the trail used to go. But now we go down around a log bridge. I went under with you, huh? Hi. Sing another bridge, and now we get a little tour view of the Stillaguamish, which is really quiet, peaceful today. And there's a beautiful big bench here if you want to just sit and rest and listen to the river. It's pretty quiet today. Where are you guys going? 1.98 miles. I am 2.2 miles in. I'm gonna go under all these logs. It's like a tunnel. This little stream is low too. And this is an interesting kind of slopey broken log crossing. And what's cool here is that you can see an old, I believe this is an old railroad rail. 2.47 miles and this um, really cool stump and root ball covered with moss used to have some artifacts on it, um, including a blue bowl, which is no longer there. Just wide enough for tiny dogs and almost my legs. I bumped my knee. 2.6 and I am seeing the lime kiln through the trees. Now this thing is super camouflaged because it's no doubt made of local rock and it's covered with various mosses and ferns and things that have grown on it since. Really neat structure. Just interesting historically. We're going to go check out this um, furnace part on the slope here that we came to first and then we'll go down and check out the front one which I think is more intact. So here's the first kiln and then we'll go down the hill to the second one. Looks like it's not going to stand too much longer. These rocks have a lot of gaps and they're cracking. We're going to walk around the back. And down the other side. I think it's a little less steep than that first side. Oh, and this side had a kiln also. And this side's actually worse, so I'm going to go back down that first side. 
All right, hopefully Frodo won't cry too much as we talk about this lime kiln. So there's the front and the best preserved kiln. And then we've got this, some information on it. This sign tells a lot more than the last one did. Built in the 1890s, it cooked limestone into lime, which was taken by the Everett and Monte Cristo Railway to use in smelting ore. So around this sign are a lot of artifacts. We've got saw blades from the logging that they did. They cut down a lot of Douglas fir to um, get these lime kilns going. And uh, there's maybe the best one right there leaning against the kiln itself. I'm not sure what that piece of metal was. And there were some, um, there's a lot of brick in here. There were some really neat bricks that said actually where they were made. They were made in Spokane. I'm not seeing them. If I find them, I will take more video. All right, I found some bricks with um, a stamp on them, but these are actually not the ones I was thinking of. But still very interesting. All right, the kiln is just behind me and I'm starting down the last part of the trail past the kiln. We are going to go, um, there's a little loop at the very end and I'll show you where the railroad bridge used to be. And then we'll go down on the banks of the Stillaguamish. There's a beautiful um, rocky beach there. Cool, talks about the timber industry here. Very nice. And then I will probably not record much after that unless there's some other highlights to show. It's been a great hike so far. Just a really beautiful view here of the Stillaguamish River. One of those really calm stretches. God, that's a pretty river. Even when it's dry out, you can't have a Pacific Northwest Trail without having mud. You can tell how narrow this is, but not as many people come past the lime kiln, so the branches are just really rubbing. All right, I'm at 3.33 miles. I usually go clockwise to the left, but this time I'm going to go counterclockwise and go up to the railroad bridge site, which is in 400 feet. It doesn't really matter. You can do this as a loop either way but I want to finish up on the shores of the Stillaguamish so we can have our lunch. It's really pretty with the sun shining through the trees like this. Once again, I'm really happy about these signs. So if I go left, I'm gonna go around the loop to the river where I'm gonna have lunch. But for now, I'm going to take this little spur this way to see the Railroad Bridge Foundation. It's actually pretty steep to get down here. Let's see if I can see it from up here. Yeah, I can. It's, uh, you can see the concrete foundation and the old bridge there. Let's see if I can get a vantage to see the other side. You can see how skinny this trail is. Luna's modeling how narrow it is. And it's really eroded and slippery. I don't recommend people um, go down here unless you know that's totally within your physical capabilities. We can see this foundation a little closer. I don't think you can make out the foundation very well through the brush and the trees, but it's right, oops, it's right over there. All right, we made it back up that slippery hill, back to the little loop trail, and now we're heading for our lunch spot. Point five five, and I am at the spot that I like to have lunch. The river is just beautiful here and I'll get some more of this when I get down there. On the other side you can see some more evidence of the industry that came through here, the railroad and logging. But this is just a beautiful, beautiful part of the Stella Guamish. It's so clear today. waterfall on the other side and then you can hear as it turns through the rapids over here. All right, the trail was seven miles round trip even and that was with the railroad foundation, a railroad bridge foundation spur as well as the little loop at the end. 
um, much shorter if you just go to the lime kiln back. I think it's like 5.2, 5.4 round trip, but seven if you do everything. And a 765 feet of elevation gain. It was really peaceful today, just beautiful. A lot more people showing up now, but we had the trail to ourselves quite often. And um, although some stream beds were dry, there was some streams flowing across the trail as well. It was a great, great hike.